Hello, God bless you. My name is Stephen. I'm the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship from Brooklyn, New York. It's time for today's daily devotion. This is where we read a chapter from the Bible about five days a week. And uh, it's just designed to help us spend some time in God's Word each day. If you've been with us for a little while as we've gone through uh, the, the Gospel of Mark, which is what we're currently going through, the Gospel of Matthew that we went through prior to that, thanks for um, participating. If this is the first of these videos that you've seen, you can go back and access all these other videos. It's just one video per chapter. And those are all sort of organized uh, you know, in a way that makes sense by book in, uh, in different playlists. So uh, feel free to check those out. Today we're reading Mark uh, chapter 13, and uh, we're approaching the end of the Gospel of Mark. In Mark chapter 13, uh, 30, 37 verses, so a little shorter than average, I'd say we see that Jesus foretells uh, the future. And that's the only subsection in this chapter. So just kind of one teaching uh, in this chapter. Verse 13 begins this way. And remember, in, in, in chapter um, 11, we've seen Jesus' triumphal entry into Jerusalem. So just to kind of mark where we are in the timeline, uh, Jesus is in that last week of his, of his earthly life in ministry. He's, he's uh, soon to be arrested. He's soon to, um, he's soon to go to the cross. And he's, <coughs> excuse me, he's teaching these things to his disciples. He's, the, these things that he's teaching in, in these chapters are what he's going to leave his disciples with. So these things are of, of real importance. As Jesus was leaving the temple that day, one of his disciples said, Teacher, look at these magnificent buildings. Look at the impressive stones and the walls. And Jesus replied, Yes, look at these great buildings, but they'll be completely demolished. Not one stone will be left on top of the other. Later, Jesus sat on the Mount of Olives across the valley from the temple, and Peter, James, and John, and Andrew came to him privately and asked, Tell us, when will this all happen? What sign will show us that these things are about to be fulfilled? And Jesus replied, Don't let anyone mislead you, for many will come in my name claiming, I'm the Messiah. They'll deceive many, and you'll hear of wars and threats of wars, but don't panic. Yes, these things must take place, but the end won't follow immediately. Nation will go to war against nation, the kingdom against kingdom. There will be earthquakes in many parts of the world as well as famines, but this is the only, only the first of the birth pains with more to come. When, the, uh, when these things begin to happen, watch out. You'll be handed over to local councils and beaten in the synagogues. You'll stand trial before governors and kings because you're my followers, but this will be your opportunity to tell them about me. For the good news must first be preached to all nations, but when you are arrested and stand trial, don't worry in advance about what to say. Just say what God tells you at the time, for it is not you who will be speaking, but the Holy Spirit. A brother will betray his brother to death. A father will betray his own child, and children will rebel against their parents and cause them to be killed. And everyone will hate you because you're my followers." But the one who endures to the end will be saved. And the day is coming when you will see the sacrilegious object that causes desecration standing where it should not be. Reader, pay attention. Then those in Judea must flee to the hills. A person out on the deck of a roof must not go down to the, into the house to pack. A person out in the field must not return even to get a coat. How terrible it will be for pregnant women and for nursing mothers in those days. And pray that your flight will not be in winter, for there will be greater anguish in those days than at any time since God created the world, and it will never be so great again. In fact, unless the Lord shortens that time of calamity, not a single person will survive. But for the sake of His chosen ones, He has shortened those days. Then if anyone tells you, look, here's the Messiah, or there He is, don't believe it. For false prophets... And false messiahs will rise up and perform signs and wonders so as to deceive, if possible, even God's chosen ones. Watch out. I've warned you about this ahead of time. And at that time, after the anguish of those days, the sun will be darkened. 
The moon will give no light. The stars will fall from the sky, and the powers in the heavens will be shaken. Then everyone will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds with great power and glory, and He'll send out His angels to gather His chosen ones from all over the world, from the farthest ends of the earth and heaven. Now learn a lesson from the fig tree. When its branches bud and its leaves begin to sprout, you know that summer is near. In the same way, when you see all these things taking place, you can know that His return is very near, right at the door. I tell you the truth, this generation will not pass from the scene before all these things take place. Heaven and earth will disappear, but my words will never disappear. However, no one knows the day or hour when these things will happen, not even the angels in heaven or the Son Himself. Only the Father knows, and since you don't know when that time will come, be on guard and stay alert. The coming of the Son of Man can be illustrated by the story of a man going on a long trip. When he left home, he gave each of his slaves instructions about the work they were to do, and he told the gatekeeper to keep watch for his return. You too must keep watch, for you don't know when the master of the household will return. In the evening, at midnight, before dawn, or at daybreak, don't let him find you sleeping when he arrives without warning. I say to you what I say to everyone. Watch for him. That's the end of Mark chapter 13. And so Jesus here is uh, instructing his disciples, his apostles, those that are going to go out and be responsible for carrying this gospel message to the world. He's teaching them that he must go, but he will return. He's teaching them, he's prophesying about things to come. But he's also very careful not to mark a date on the calendar. He's saying uh, about dates and times, don't worry about that. Just be on guard. Live every day like it could be today, because it just might. Hope you've been blessed by this chapter of Mark's Gospel. Uh, So thankful uh, that you've joined us. Hope you'll join us again for Mark chapter 14. God bless you.